<laughs> hey, who would you describe as Jerry Seinfeld's best friend on that show? Uh, George. See, I, I would have said that too, but this crossword I was doing said Elaine. What? I know, right? I'm oh. in, I mean, there's a case That's for That's his it. ex-girlfriend. Yeah, but they were very close, so maybe they were best friends. Yeah, but I feel like... Because Elaine is always off yeah, doing her own true. thing. And just like yeah. pops this, pops in when she doesn't have this any, was the anybody issue, cooler. This was the issue that I had with this with this crossword clue. I'm, I'm sorry to hear Also, that. interested to note that all his friends have the same number of letters in their name. Come to think of it. <laughs> E-L-A-I-N-E-G-O-R-G-E-K-R-A-M-E-R. E- 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 Jerry isn't one of his friends. <laughs> okay, what about N E W? M A N. Oh, even Newman is one of his. Yeah, he's the enemy. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to. What kind of day it was? Uh, well, it's a beautiful day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Uh, it's a pretty good day in our neighborhood too. Yeah, it's pretty hot. It is. I it's a hot it's September hot. evening. It was but pretty the, hot. The sunset is nice. It's pretty hot today. Yeah. I was chided for wearing jeans, but I hadn't noticed it. I'm Stephen. I'm Andrew. And it's another episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah. Episode 1477. Woo! Numbers. Sure, I guess I'm not as excited about numbers as you are. Me neither. I'm faking it till I'm making it. Uh, Mr. Rogers has a bag of mysteries. Yeah, he has a bag. It looks to me like the sort of bag one would use to clean up after a dog. Right. And he says, guess what's inside it? It's, it's something interesting. And I say, ooh, I gotta get... But then he opens it up and he says, ooh, it smells good. And I'm like, well, then it, he didn't clean up after a dog with it. He says it's something food, so he's gonna take it to the kitchen. Yeah. He lays out a paper towel on the kitchen table because he's very clean. Yeah, he says it's food, so we have to be careful with it. And so, as such, he grabs a paper towel, which... I don't know why he didn't just grab a plate. Maybe he really didn't want to clean up. Um, anyways, it turns out to be pretzels. Yeah. Which makes sort of everything preceding seem all the stranger. Why? You don't really need a paper towel for pretzels. If they're greasy ones. I guess. Also, he says it smells good. He, as we find out in this What episode, would you describe as the aroma of pretzels? Well, I, like... I've never noticed that it, they'd smell like anything. If you get a bag of pretzels, they're not going to smell anything. But if you get a pretzel from a bakery, it's going to smell good. I guess. Like uh, his, he's got five. I don't know. I don't know that I've ever had a fresh pretzel. I guess he's got five types of pretzels. He's got also these aren't bakery pretzels. These are some bulk bin pretzels. Well, he's got five different kinds. He's got a fat one, a thin one, a small one, a stick, which he calls a one, and a circle, which he calls a zero. Yeah. Uh, Both and I would are... say that the fat one could potentially be from a bakery. I mean, maybe. I think it's probably just a a, a thick okay. buy it in a supermarket kind of pretzel. Anyways, we find out in this episode that Mr. Rogers likes pretzels a lot. He likes pretzels a whole lot. He's going to take us to the pretzel factory, uh-huh. uh huh, which he describes as a place he has always wanted to visit because he likes pretzels. And he said it with great em- emph- emphaticness. Emphasis. Sure. Uh, but before we go to the... Pretzel factory, uh, we need to look carefully and listen carefully. I don't know the other words because I didn't look carefully or listen carefully yeah, to we, the song. Uh, yeah, we uh, we get a pre field trip lecture in the form of a song where he yeah. says, Listen, kids, you we've heard this song attention. before. We have, it's a jazzy number, uh huh. So assuming we've looked and listened carefully. Let's go to the pretzel factory. Yeah. You'll know it because there's a giant pretzel out front. Yeah, we pan across Mr. Rogers' neighborhood as we often do. And this time I was looking at it and thinking it kind of looks like a post-apocalyptic, like, last of us. Because there's all these cars that are just parked in the middle of the road. Oh, yeah. Just kind of like a bus sitting there in the middle of the road not doing anything. Uh, So we get to the pretzel shop the pet pretzel factory yeah it's a big stone building apparently it's the first pretzel 
factory in America. Oh, really? According to the website. Oh, well, no sure wonder. looks like it. No wonder Pretzel's fanatic, Mr. Rogers, is, is so excited to go there. Yeah, to go there. it's a real uh, pilgrimage for him. Uh, so when he gets there, he asks if he gets to see how to make pretzels, and they're like, well, we're going to teach you. Yeah. Uh, it's run by family, uh, Clyde and his wife, Barbara, and their son, Mike. They have a last name. Let's assume it's Pretzels. Yeah. Mike Mike Pretzels, Clyde Pretzels, and Barbara Pretzels. Yeah. Mike Mike is the... Mike is the son. Clyde uh, is the Clyde. Son. Okay, Clyde. Clyde uh, sets Mr. Rogers up with a paper hat and an apron. While he's putting it on Mr. Rogers, he says, Hey, you're getting a little weight there, eh, friend? Yeah. Because <laughs> he's the great gazoo. Uh, but he kind of... He's kind of snarky with Mr. Rogers. Yeah. First of all, weird that, that this guy apparently knows Mr. Rogers' usual weight. <laughs> yeah, because he's never been to this factory before. Yeah. Maybe he, like, he knows him outside Socially. of work. Yeah. And he's just like, buddy, you got to let me visit your pretzel, <laughs> pretzel shop. Maybe. I'm the biggest pretzel fan. Maybe. I can smell him from a mile away. Mr. Rogers says, well, I'll, I'll, I will gain some weight after I eat all these pretzels. Because, again, he really likes pretzels. Yeah. He's and this guy's like, oh, no, pretzels are fattening. They're a delicious and healthy or they're, they're a delicious and tasty treat. To which I responded, Siri, do pretzels make you fat? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, they're, I mean, they're not, they're not great for you. Yeah. They, they only have like a gram of fat, but they don't really have anything else. So don't, don't trust a pretzel factory man on the health benefits of pretzels. Yeah. Well, he never says they're healthy. He's like, no, they're not fattening. They're delicious and tasty. And right. I'm like, all right, way to dodge the question there, Clyde. Uh, so um, Mr. Rogers makes some pretzels. I'm constantly it's boring an- anxious because he's not rolling up his sleeves. Oh. So his sweater sleeves, which are real baggy Oh, his sweater sleeves. Oh, no. I hadn't even thought about that. Are just like knocking up against this. Because, again, I, I tuned dough. out for sort of the dough stirring montage. Yeah, it was kind of boring. Because I've, I've seen dough get stirred. I, I was chatting with Siri for most of that, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, but then we head over to the pretzel break, which is how they used to need it's dough. The, it's the dough break. Back in the old Mike, day. Yes, Mike the Pretzel day. takes them over there. Yeah. So the dough break basically is a big, like a flat board. It's a seesaw. With a with a two by four sort of lever on top of it that you put the dough under. It's sort of like a like a nutcracker or a garlic press. Right. Um, or a water pump. It's a lever. Yeah. Basically. And you put the dough under it and then you just Google mash it. the mash the two by four basically down on it. At least in Mike's case, by sitting on it and bouncing up and down. You th- you don't think that's like the way that they this is not how they actually I'm not saying it's not the way they used it, because it's probably the most like energy efficient and best for your back way. To, to do that sort of repetitive motion. Uh-huh. But I'm just saying, Mr. Rogers was taught how to do this by a child, so you never know. Right. And, and before uh, Mike takes him over to the dough break, uh, they say, well, this is how this is how we used to make pretzels in, in the past. Yeah, we got a mixer now. This is... Yeah. And only later do we find out that the way we were making them before is also not the contemporary way to make pretzels. Yeah. That's, we're just going. Yeah. We started in the past. They maintain we this, in the past. this historic pretzel kitchen, but right. they've they've got a whole factory in next, the back. In the back, yeah, which we'll get to in a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first, we head back and make some some good old fashioned pretzels, right? And uh, brace yourself because here comes the Jesus juke. Oh yeah, uh, uh, they talk about uh, how the pretzels were invented in uh, Germany, Italy, and France. I think. Yeah, and uh, they were. They were given to children for learning their prayers. Right. So this was the uh, this was the little marble maze with Jesus holding a sheep of its day. Right. That's what I got for learning a Bible verse one time. <laughs> uh, so he talks about how like the you twist it over. Like, yeah, just sort of in the process of making. It. So you so you like you twist that over. It's like and that represents a children's arms crossed to pray. And I'm like, whoa. That was a surprise. And then he uh, then he sticks them back to the top and he says, and that represents their parents the for parents. some reason. Yeah. And he's like, and if you got three holes, that's good. Mr. Rogers is like, so yeah, Mr. Rogers always has three holes? And he's <laughs> like, yes, that represents the Holy Trinity. Yeah, I feel like Mr. Rogers was just like, hey, uh, I think we missed a little part of Mr. Rogers, the uh, theology student. Yeah. 
Uh, so he this raises a question what? about the uh, about the straight pretzel and circle pretzel we saw earlier. Those are those are heresies. Uh, those are just uh, secular pretzels. So then the secret is revealed that this is not actually how they make pretzels yeah. today. Here's a big old factory where we actually make pretzels in the back. Yeah. And um, this is some neat stuff. Some conveyor belts. I like they... the two. There's two conveyor belts, sort of one on top of the other, that roll the dough between them. Yeah, that's neat because it starts as like a little just a whole lot of conveyor belts. It out. The whole thing is just conveyor belts. Yeah, Ahoy. there's an arm that twists them into the mm -hmm. into the praying hands, right? And the Trinity can can robots pray? Whoa, can they feel? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they can make pretzels. Yeah. Uh, so actually, there was a robot that there was a robot that blesses. Yeah, that gives blessings. Okay, I don't I don't know how that's possible, but well, I'll send you a YouTube video and you can put it up on the Tumblr. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so they they take a collection of these pretzels and they yeah. give them as a the gift. machine gets a bit wrong. What? When there there's this conveyor belt that takes them and then drops them all into the drying rack in rows mm -hmm. of six. Right. And he's like, and it'll put down six there, and I'm counting, and we're like, one, two, three, four, five, and then it, it, it started a little too late, mm -hmm. so it started in, like, the second column, mm -hmm. and it didn't get that last one, and then as it goes back, there's this pretzel, like, half off the conveyor belt, Oh, and I think it, like, dropped it on top of another pretzel. Well, you know what it is? Probably that's not even, like, the machine that they use anymore. They, we got a back backer. Right. That's where we keep the but that's future trade pretzels. Secrets. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, yeah, and then they fill up a big old like tub. Yeah, like I would call it a, a like a barrel. It's a bucket. It's a large. If you ever got three different flavors of popcorn for Christmas, it's, it's just a, a bit bigger than that. Yeah, maybe even bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, Mister Clyde... Rogers will have a nice waste paper basket when he's done with his pretzels. Clyde Pretzels uh, says to Mister Rogers, he says, uh, "That ought to last you uh, what a week," which. I, I think he's poking fun at his, his, his pretzel weight, weight yeah. again. He's which I mean because the, the, how many pretzels a day himself. do you how many pretzels a day do you have to eat a when you bunch. got a bucket that big? A bunch, a lot. He also describes it as a present to take back to your mouth. I I heard mouth, but I thought no, he probably said house. I'm pretty sure he said mouth. All right, well if we both heard mouth, it's a present to take yeah. back to his mouth. Um, Clyde Pretzel's kind of a wisecracker, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't care for him, especially not your impression of him. It makes him seem real snarky. <laughs> hey, hey, Mister Fred Rogers, why don't you take all the pretzels? Yeah, hey, hey. and then so we head back to Mister Rogers' mouth. Yep, and uh, he brings up the trolley. Yeah, and he says, "Let's imagine that the trolley's carrying a barrel similar to this yeah, one, a container. I think he calls it, uh, delivering something to." Corny's factory. Yeah. And what do you suppose he's making? I don't know. Let's go to the land of I make-believe. It's pretzels. And find out. Okay. Or will we? Hop on the trolley. Hop on the trolley. And... Should have brought a book. No, that joke, I'm sure. There's a barrel full of maybe pretzels or something. Yeah, on the roof. Just up there. Not strapped down or anything. No, just sliding around his trolley. Just held up on the, beeps back on and the forth. Side. Here we are in the land of make-believe. Here we are in the land of make-believe. Trolley pulls up in front of the castle and starts screaming because he doesn't have a track to go to the factory. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So he's just the shouting at any, designed anyone system. who might be listening. Because uh, the king's funneling all his money into jets and of uh, infrastructure. Lady Aberlin shows up and she was starts in the castle talking helping to out. Trolley. She apologizes for something. She uh, apologizes for not coming out right away, I think. Oh, right. And I'm here thinking... Lady Aberlin, if the trolley doesn't have feelings, then there's no need to apologize. Ooh, snap. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Does it have feelings? Doesn't it? Mm. I think there's still... We've got to keep digging further. Yeah. Lady Aberlin seems to refer to the royal family as us, which I think is the first time I've seen that. Hmm. Because um, she talks about the... I mean, it's the same conflict established yesterday. King Friday wants a jet. I mean, we haven't seen Betty Aberlin oh, in Mr. Sarah Rogers. Sada, Saturday thinks we don't need it. We haven't seen Betty Aberlin in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood in quite a while. When was the last time we did handwriting? I think it was the last time we saw her. 
Yeah, that was that was like a long time ago. I guess that was like t- maybe twenty years ago at this point. I thought we'd seen her since then. Maybe not. I don't think so. Not not in Mister Rogers' neighborhood. Mm. I'm thinking she probably moved moved there full time. Yeah, moved into the castle. Yeah, lives in the castle now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, she, maybe she's going to college there. Maybe. Yeah. Lady Aberlin wants to make her own way in the world. So Lady Aberlin agrees to deliver yet another package. But on the condition that she not do it speedily at all. Yeah. Because she likes to take her time. Yeah. Which she then... She sings a song about. And then she, one of the lines in the song is, I, I like to take my time because I might make mistakes if I rush. And as she's saying this, she starts balancing the barrel on her head. And I'm like, from what I'm seeing, you're going to make mistakes because you're taking your time, not mm. if you were in she a She doesn't, rush. though. She comes out the other side of the tree. She's still got that on her head, balanced. Yep. Um, and then I had to rewind because I missed it the first time. Yeah, she, same. She sets the container down and on it, the sort of mezzanine it, of it Corey's gets factory. Pulled, flung it in the direction of the... Flies off behind her. In such a manner as you might just be about to set something down and then fling it over your head backwards. <laughs> yeah. Not not dissimilar to that. I feel like... As it, far as trajectory. I feel like it was tied to something, though. I feel I like somebody think so. pulled it. I think she just threw it over. Her well, head. then she got a lot of momentum with not much of a fling. I maybe have to rewatch it, but I'm pretty sure she just flings it. Okay. Well, that'll be a good gif. I have a little diagram of it and a note that says weird. The barrel fling? Yeah. Mm. So, uh, Corny shows up and he says, hi, how are you? Do you want to try the thing I'm making? And she's like, oh, I was delivering a barrel to you and it went flying up into the sky. And then he says, oh, that, that would make it airmail, yes? And then she's like, what? Oh, yeah, airmail, haha. Okay, anyways, I, this is serious. I just lost your package. Not a time for jokes. Yeah, but Corny doesn't seem to care. He no. offers He offers her some of what he's been making, indicating that it's a food. Right. And this is when Lady Lane pops up out of nowhere. We're all very surprised. And assumes that it's eggplant parmesan. Yeah, that's her guess. Eggplant parmesan. Um, She also confesses to the abduction of the container. When she appears, uh, there's a great reaction from Lady Aberlin. She's like, oh, it's Lady Elaine. Like Mm -hmm. a very, hello, Newman. (laughs) Hello, Elaine. Oh, wait, that was a character on that show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lady Elaine, in, in I think her most overt piece of villainy yet, mm-hmm. has has abducted this container. And is holding it hostage until the plans of yeah. Corny especially are revealed. In the sea room of her museum. Oh, she has a sea room. Yeah, so she, she has alphabet rooms like King Friday. Who copied whom? I mean, she room. has a museum, which I feel like makes more sense to have alphabetical rooms. Maybe. Because she has a museum of everything. Right. And so you would want to do that alphabetically like a dictionary, which also has everything. It's maybe not the most sensible way to lay out a museum, but it's a more sensible way to lay out a museum than it is way to lay out a castle. But Corny just doesn't really care. No, because he says, by the time I need what's in that barrel, everyone will already know what is the machine for. He says, you'll be able to smell it, and that uh, it'll be... I think something about twisty shapes. And he says some will be curled shapes. up and some will be stretched out. Yeah. Which I was thinking it was pretzels, but I don't know. Curled up and stretched out? Maybe that can refer to pretzels. Yeah. Some of them are curly. Some of them are straight. They're not really curly. They're more of a knot. I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm thinking curly like a spiral. I bet it's pretzels. I don't think this show has it in us to pull a fake out on us. Okay. I I would have thought if it was pretzels, then... This is the show that solves its mysteries before they are presented. I think Lady Elaine, Fairchild disappears. Lady Aberlin runs into a representative of the Air and Land Vehicles Incorporated. a l stands for Air and Land. Air and Land Vehicles. The largest and most successful supplier of vehicles in, in the, the universe. universe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which I haven't heard of them, but I guess Earth is a small portion of the universe. True. So. They can True. have you the can barely, corner on the rest of the market. We barely, couldn't even know about them. Yeah, we haven't tapped into that galactic mm-hmm. market yet. Uh, so Lady Aberlin escorts this representative of a l vehicles to the castle. Yeah. Because uh, she has a meeting with King Friday, who is bonkers for jets. He's cuckoo for jets. He's jets for jets. Me want honey jets. Me likey jetsy. Mm-mm, Jets. Uh, okay. 
Might as well face it, you're addicted to jets. So they get to the castle, uh, and King Friday pops out and says, Lady Evelyn and visitor, I presume? Mm-hmm. Does he say visitor or stranger? No, he says visitor. Okay. And I was like, well, that's that's a pretty vague presumption, so <laughs> yeah. I, I guess you're correct as yeah. usual. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's easy to be right when you're allowed to be that vague. <laughs> this is true. Um, so then we get the uh, presentation. Very fancy presentation. Very fancy I presentation. I wanted to buy this jet this after she nice, was done. I mean, who wouldn't want to buy this jet? Let me tell you about this jet. Tell it to the us. The 13 Special Model KF-01, custom designed for King Friday. In royal purple. Royal purple. Uh, it's got reclining thrones. Yep. Uh, it's got maxi thrust engine. Yeah. And, and 13, 13 fuel count tanks. Them, 13 fuel tanks. Although looking at the schematics, it appears to be basically just, uh, a standard, like, airliner. Like, it's got reclining thrones, but it's got, right. like, a hundred of them. Yeah. It's not like there are other rooms. Yeah. This isn't, like, a luxury. <laughs> they describe it private as jet. taking your castle with you, but the, it does seem like. There are mostly just seating. Yeah, like, like maybe he means passenger. taking all the castle staff. <laughs> maybe. Do you think? Do you think that this that was the has problem? A staff of hundreds. Yeah, I mean, we've got like probably thirty different. Uh, what's his name? What's our old friend Edgar's. Edgar? We probably have thirty Edgars working. Thirty Edgars in the kitchen. You gotta have shafts. You gotta have. You gotta have a crew to maintain his other plane that we find out he's already got. Yeah. Uh, Did they say if his other plane's a jet? Uh, no, they just call it a plane. Okay. Um, at the end of this presentation, which it's like a trifold that keeps flipping out yeah, more sides. Fold. And then at the very end, the main face of it flips down and then a model of the jet yeah. pops out. Pops out. And it's then she, very nice. It's very, uh, it's yeah. It's surrounded in lights. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a nice, it's a nice bit of prop work. Yeah. I wonder if it was built by the show's prop master, who also plays Mr. McFeely, it turns out. Mm. Yeah. Mr. McFeely. Prop That's why master. he's always delivering things. Yeah. Because <laughs> he just gets them done. He's like, are, are you sure? Are you sure we don't need a goat prop in this episode? <laughs> I've got a goat. I've come into a goat. But then Sarah Saturday pops up mid pitch. And she's like, well, what, what? What are you doing here? We talked about this. You're not getting another jet or another plane. I'm I'm sorry. I think that you might be wasting your time on this sales pitch. Yeah, she doesn't want King Friday to get even into this because she knows he's going to get hooked. She says, "Well, we have we have one plane already, and that already uses too much fuel." Yeah. So her big problem here seems to be carbon footprint. Either uh, yeah. carbon footprint or fuel prices. I'm yeah. guessing carbon footprint. If you're just buying a jet, you can probably afford to operate it. I don't know. It's expensive. I mean, true. Operating it is is definitely the bigger expense than purchasing. But uh, and so she's like, "No, this is a bad idea." And given what I know of King Friday's money, I think it's probably a um, ecological concern. King Friday shoots back. He says, "It's purple. It has a lot of thirteens. You're not even looking." Yeah, I wrote that dead too. <laughs> it's a great line. Uh, um, and then Sarah Saturday says, "We will discuss this anon." And then uh, both exit. Yes. To a flourish of oboes. Prince Tuesday's crying. Oh, right. And yes. he's crying immediately because at first I'm like, did King Friday start crying because he can't get his jet? <laughs> no, <laughs> and then the camera pans over to Prince Tuesday wiping his tears in the curtains. Yeah. Uh, and he's sad because his parents are fighting. Yeah. He thinks it's his fault, maybe, because he wished for a jet one time. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't tell anybody. But he, he wished that he yeah. might have a jet. So, which I'm wondering, like, is the plane they already have a jet? In which case, come on, Fritz Tuesday. No, no, no. I think I think because they refer to the jet as the new one and the right. plane. So is you the think they've just got like a they have an aeroplane. Like a, you think it's a twin prop or like a Cessna? Like they probably came to the picnic last week in, in an aeroplane. In an aeroplane. But they wanted to bring the entire staff along that on their picnic. Right. So it's not to leave anyone out. Yeah. Or just get there faster. Um, so then I think Prince Tuesday sort of leaves. He sobs away. Yeah. And then Lady Elaine. Then Lady Elaine pops up. Jumps out and says, and says are they getting a divorce? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, well, I always knew the day would come because yeah. King Friday is not an easy person to yeah. get along with. They probably are. I never thought it would last, she says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is 
Like that's the backstory I want to see. <laughs> this this I wish I really wish we knew what her her relationship was uh, to King Friday. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I, maybe I, he's a sister. That's my hunch. King she Friday, feels she King reads Friday's like a sister to me. Witchy sister. So she shows up and she's like, "Oh, looks like you're having a tough time selling this plane, huh? Well, why don't you come back to the museum? I'll show you some stuff." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's gonna. She's. We're, what we're missing in this episode is the tag of the uh, of the airplane saleswoman, like wandering dazed and confused out of town if, after buying like no the forty different. Bits of bric-a-brac from the museum. The A and L representative says, "Like, sure, yeah." I'll, while I'm waiting for this angry couple that I've found myself in the middle of, unfortunately, yeah. uh, I'll go visit your museum. And then the camera like follows the representative in the direction of the museum, and I was so excited. But yeah, then it I just wanted fades to see inside the, the museum. No, instead we go to the tree. I guess. I guess if you get passed over for the throne, I can see that breeding some contempt between siblings. Mm-hmm. It sure doesn't Crusader Kings. So then we go back to Prince Tuesday, who's just sobbing who's and he's packing his sad, suitcase. And he's got a suitcase and he's he's like very quietly saying, I'm not going far, Mom and Dad. I'm just going. Does he say he's going to Daniel Tiger's? I think he's basically he's running away from home all the way to Daniel Tiger's house across town. Yeah, he's walking sideways with his hands on his face, holding a suitcase, yeah. sobbing. It's and very saying, weird to see. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, He walks across town. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think, one of the few times, maybe the first time, we've seen one of the puppets, like, fully... Walking into no man's land? <laughs> fully removed, yeah, from any sort of wall or object. Bo- like, it, they're, they're doing the Jim Henson thing, where yeah. where it's only the camera cutting him off. He's got these long legs. Yeah, because <laughs> he's clearly five feet tall. Like, he has to duck under the trolley like Lady Averlyn does. Yeah, yeah. It's, and so he ducks under the trolley, weird. and I'm like, doesn't that clear... You've got clearance, I feel yeah. like. And taller. We can see where he's been, so we know that he's he's very high up in the air. It's a little less jarring when he gets to Daniel Tiger's clock. Yeah, then he's close enough to a yeah. counter that But still on the wrong side of it, that it's a little there's, there's a, a little off. Ledge. And also just the way it's framed, you can see a lot of him. Like, even even if you just count what we see, he's unusually tall. Mm-hmm. Um, so I forget exactly what he says to Daniel Tiger. I think it's like, hi, I'm coming to stay with you. And Daniel Tiger's like, okay, can we play first? He's like, he says, yeah, I brought a car. He says, oh, are you not feeling well? He's like, I've got a car. You want to play with this car? Yeah, I think so they, so they like, yeah, let's go inside and play with cars. Inside my clock where I live. Yeah, he lives on a clock. I know. What's so weird about that? I'm just stating it for the time. Uh, as soon as... Prince Tuesday reaches Daniel Tiger's clock, which takes not but a minute. Lady he Averland, reaches it anon, one might say. Uh, Lady Everland starts freaking out because he's missing and his suitcase is gone. Yeah. Uh, she she sorted this out real quick. Yeah, she saw this coming, She's I like, feel. She couldn't find him. I mean, he's like, I better check to see if his suitcase is missing. It is. Mm-hmm. That's not good. So she goes to the tree... Asks um, Henrietta and Henrietta next, the owl. Cat next the owl, hey, have you seen Prince Tuesday? He's missing. And they this basically is... say, well, if he's missing, we'll help look for him. And then Lady Everlyn runs over to the trolley. It was like, hey, Prince Tuesday is missing. So that's a big you headline. check on the tracks? The prince is missing. Which, if he was really trying to get out of town, he'd probably go along the tracks. That's true. If I know anything about the hobo life. Yeah. And also, those seem to be the only real ways in and out of town. Right. So yeah, where do you think Prince Tuesday is, Stephen? Well, um, I mean, probably with the only person we haven't asked, Daniel Tiger. <laughs> yeah, who we saw him go to. Yes. Yeah. No mystery, and you don't want to scare people, I guess. No. With tension. I'm trying to think how I feel like I could handle this mystery even at a very early age. Maybe. Maybe. Mister Rogers was very considerate to it, Charles. Yes. They had a whole uh, episode. I watched. I watched a TED Talk, a TED Talk okay. X Pittsburgh uh, presentation by Mr. McFeely, David oh, Newell, yeah. uh, and he mentioned that they had multiple episodes that were inspired by the current events. Like, oh, we need to oh, talk to like children that about time, this. Like that time the prince ran away from Buckingham Palace. No, no, no. no. Uh, he said, like, the Wizard of Oz, kids were all scared of the flying monkeys, and so they had the Wicked Witch on oh, the I show. Oh, I've seen thumbnails for that. Uh, to explain that she's just an actor. 
and this is how what she does. Yeah. Uh, and she's a nice person. And they also, in the black and white days... Just an actor who was badly burned. In the black and white days, they actually had at least an episode explaining assassination wow. to children because this was like was hot, when Kennedy got? hot on the heels of Kennedy and Martin Luther King. Oh, yeah, right. Both of them. Uh, and so they're like, we need to explain this at a kid's level, basically saying like... Was there a land of make-believe? Did somebody I don't know. I want to take out a hit on King Friday. I don't know. I because you know to it's look Lady Elaine Fairchild, or maybe it's not Lady Elaine Fairchild. Everybody thinks it's Lady Elaine Fairchild, but she's she's the one who gets to the bottom of it. Anyways, I guess the message was uh, some people try to solve their problems with a gun, but that's not the way to solve problems. Right. That that is the way that you explain an assassination to a when children. all you have is a gun, everything it, looks like a target. Everything else looks like a nail. Right. <laughs> um, I just imagine if we were going to sh- shoot nails into the wall. <laughs> I wonder if that would work. How did we even get on this side? I don't know, but we've got another episode of Myth Posers. Could you nail a nail? With a gun. Could you hammer a nail with a bullet? I don't think fired so. Fired from a gun. No, I don't think so. I think if you were right on it. It would slip off, I think, either way. You'd have to be, you'd have to be dead on it. Mm, I don't think so. Well, that about does it for the land of make believe, so let's hop on the trolley. Yeah, let's hop on the trolley. I'm going to turn my page. Go for it. Got barely any notes for this next segment coming up. Uh, There's a knock on the door. Um, Who could it be but Chef Brockett? Who is quickly losing clients to other bakeries. Yeah. Yeah, he comes in. He's very very excited. He's like, oh, I heard you were interested in pretzels, so. uh, And I know everyone loves vegetarians so much. (laughs) <laughs> so I combined the two, and he's got this... Which is a lie. Nobody likes veggie treats. No. I don't care if you carve it into a canoe. A carrot's still a carrot. Slap some peanut butter on there, and we'll talk. I guess Chef Brockett's bakery doesn't bake pretzels, which is why he's in such a panic, because he just has the purchased bag Oven pretzels? Pretzels? Yeah. The kind that you would get in a plastic bag. I mean, as we've established, it takes a lot to make a pretzel. Right. He's made a diorama. Pretty immaculate diorama. Pretzels yeah. and vegetables. Uh, it's but like also a, a boring diorama. It's like a rolling English countryside with a... It's mostly an empty road. Uh, Andrew, there was a carriage made out of a zucchini. I know, and there's, there's, and a, there's a boat a, made out of a carrot. And there's a highway just, made of cream I'm cheese just saying and blueberries. That visually, the piece is dominated by this highway, which is completely empty. There's no cars on the highway. It's mostly just well, two lanes of listen, cream cheese. Chef Rocket was working on this and blueberry when he died. found out that Fred Rogers was cavorting with, with uh, the competition. Right. And so he's like, well, this is going to have to do because I need to win back my customer. If he doesn't make pretzels, is that really the competition? Uh, well, Mr. Rogers is going to start getting all of his baking just from pretzels. We know how much he loves them. Mr. Rogers, so he's going to start having like pretzel sandwiches, pretzel yeah. cakes? Yeah. Uh, he says he's going to enter it in the... What's the word he uses? I don't know. Bizarre, I, don't. I think. Oh, yes. He says he's, he's going to take, take it to the, the bizarre. bizarre. And I would fit. I said it would fit right in. It's very bizarre. Oh, hey. It doesn't read well on camera, I think. It's mostly just a mess of green. And a I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I just, just, oh, and there's fences made of... It's just hard of, to tell what's going on. There's fences made of pretzels, I guess, is the pretzel part of this. Yeah, and some of the wheels on the carriage are pretzels, and right. the oars are pretzel sticks. Because if Chef Brockett knows anything about boats, it's that pretzel sticks are oars. <laughs> right. He's uh, more of a food sculptor than a baker. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't really know how to make a good tasting recipe, so no. much as I know which foods are which shapes and how to connect <laughs> those shapes into grander shapes. Which is a very preschool sort of baking, really, when you think about it. Right. Um, nothing nothing baked or cooked yeah. on this. So then Chef Rocket leaves as quickly as he came. Yep. And, was there. and Mr. Rogers grabs his bag of pretzels. And his tin of pretzels. <laughs> he has two containers yeah. full of pretzels. He walks out. My last note for this episode, and I think it's a good note to end on, is Mr. Rogers is going to have a heart attack. And I will too. Oh, wait. There's a lot of other stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Too bad. Um, so that was episode 1477. Yeah. Uh, I bet next we'll be doing episode 1478. You're right. That's which how is numbers work. Volume 2, episode 3 it will be. Ooh. On, on the Amazon. Amazon. Yes. Or just watch PBS and maybe it'll show up in a rerun. Are they still running Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on PBS? I don't know. In the TED Talk, David Newell said that they were on PBSKids.org. And I he said there would be about 30 episodes. 
at any given time. And I went there and they, no Mr. Rogers that I could see. Well, what does David Newell know over the internet? And anyways, it's not in my region anyways. It's sad, really, because he's been made obsolete by the internet, the speediest delivery of them all. Speaking of the internet, here's some people you can find on the internet. Us at pleasewon'tyoubemy.tumblr.com. Yeah. Uh, we'll have pictures of what? Oh, there were some good, probably some some pretzel press or dough press. Yeah. Gifts. Uh, definitely that presentation of the yeah. KF-01 Royal Purple Jet. That's some good one. We'll have that blessing robot. Uh, so check it out. All sorts of fun stuff. Our theme song was provided by Dan Brisbane. Dan Brisbane. I didn't come up with that. I wrote a song last time and I can't top that. Our Charlie Transition tune was made by Rindale. Yep. So with that, we bid you adieu. But we'll be back when the week is new. And we'll have more ideas adieu. Uh, Andrew, I know you'll have things you want to talk about. I will adieu. I will adieu. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be won't you please, won't you please, please won't you be my neighbor, won't you please, won't you please, please won't you be my podcast. We have one plane and it already uses too much gas, and now you want a second which will use even more. Well, it's purple, uh, and it will have 13s all over it. Uh, You're not even looking at it.